Spirit. Good evening and welcome to everyone tonight as we celebrate this feast of the baptism of the Lord when we recall both Christ himself entering to the waters of the Jordan and we remember how we ourselves through our own baptisms have been joined to him in his death and in his life. And so, brothers and sisters, as we call down that baptism of the Lord and the Holy Spirit and in fire upon us anew, let us begin this Mass calling to mind our sins and asking for the Lord's pardon. You are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. You are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. The Lord, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children, by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A 
reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by a strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, 
The grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. When the kindness and generous love of God, our Savior, appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. After all, the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the things that always fascinates me the most about other people is their face. Both the smiles and wrinkles, the eyes, as well as, let's be honest, the scars, the hairs, the warts, everything about it, really. Even if a person might not be in the running for Hollywood stardom, I've never seen a face that doesn't tell tell me something about that person. I've never seen a face that fails to tell a deeply human story. There's something about people's faces that, for me at least, is just downright interesting to look at. Even though we say very often, don't judge a book by its cover, we have this idea, I think intuitively, that a person's face will show us the truth about them. The emotions that pass over it, the way that emotions are reflected, the way that their eyes focus or maybe don't focus on particular things, the exact way that a mouth will shape words. 
When we ask somebody how they're doing, or when we meet someone for the first time, we often look closely at their face, precisely because the truth of that person's soul is to be found there. And it's especially to watch someone's face in really important moments, like at a wedding, when a bride and a groom say, I do, to each other. Everyone leans in to watch at that moment because we're hoping to catch a glimpse of the love that they share. And maybe the most fascinating time of all to look at someone's face is the moment when they're praying. What expressions of what emotions do they have when they turn their mind toward God? This curiosity about a face was very much, I think, on the mind of the crowd in today's gospel. The people present there at the Jordan River had been taught by John the Baptist to expect a coming Messiah, an anointed deliverer of their people, and then suddenly Jesus shows up with a whole bunch of buzz going on around him. John reacted to his appearance in a way that he hadn't for anybody else. Usually he'd just tell people, repent and be baptized, but he greets this arrival with respect, an unusual respect from the camel hair wearing prophet. And then there's an interesting detail that St. Luke tells us in his version of the story as we heard it today, how everyone watched Jesus praying while he was being baptized by John. The translation in our lectionary is a little bit loose here, so here's a slightly more exact version of the way it goes. When all the people had been baptized, and while Jesus was being baptized and was praying, the heavens opened up, and the Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove, and a voice came from heaven. Before we jump to talking about the voice and the dove, let's just start by imagining ourselves there with those crowds, looking at the face of Jesus, at the face of the Son of God as he stood there in prayer. And by all accounts, our Lord had a pretty normal face, not somebody that would stand out in a crowd. Standard issue, Middle Eastern features, dark hair, dark eyes, the whole thing. We can imagine maybe a few smile lines at the corners of his face and his eyes from those joyful years, 30 years he'd spent with his family, and maybe even a few wrinkles up on his brow from focusing on the hard work of a carpentry shop. In other words, the face of the guy next door, friendly, relaxed. But just before stepping into the water, as the crowds watched him intently, they would have seen his normally very calm and open features suddenly take on a serious look, like someone accepting a serious responsibility. And as the Jordan water went over him, he glanced quickly up to the heavens, and you can almost see the question on his lips there, along with a prayer. Here I am, Father. Is this your will? And then, whew. All the people who were watching him saw the sudden joy, the exultation on his face, and they had no doubt in that moment about who exactly this was, perhaps even without needing to hear the voice that then came. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. In other words, at the moment of the Lord's baptism, in his face, there was yet another epiphany, like the epiphany we celebrated last week, another manifestation of his identity, like we had on Christmas, this time, again, through a sign and a voice. A sign, just like in the Christmas gospel where the shepherds saw an angel and heard the angel's voice, and just like those wise men who last week saw a star and heard the testimony of Mary and Joseph. But Luke puts a new spin on the revelation here by joining this manifestation of Jesus' relationship with the, the Father of his divine sonship to the word and sign, to a moment of prayer. And the deepest truth revealed in that prayer, the clearest reality to be seen in the Lord's face was his relationship with God, his Father. After all, what is prayer if not time dedicated to our relationship with God? But our focus today isn't so much on prayer as one of the basics of discipleship like it was at times last fall. We're standing today at the very end of the Christmas season, just 24 hours or so left of it to go at a time when we're gathering up the truths we've experienced through the waiting and through the celebrations, when we're contemplating the expectations and surprises and the hopes and joys that the season has brought us. And the purpose of this reflection is to launch ourselves out into this new year with a renewed sense of our purpose and mission, to prepare ourselves to walk once again with Jesus in his earthly ministry, 
but this time to follow him to the cross, to the grave, and beyond. We gaze upon the Lord's face today with the wonder of looking at the face of that child in Bethlehem, but also with an amazement at seeing that face fully grown, fully mature, fully aware of who he is and what he's here to do. We're experiencing here on this Feast of the Lord's Baptism that shock you get every once in a while when you run into somebody that you met as a baby but haven't seen much in the years between, and then you're amazed, excited at how they look, how they've grown and matured, how their face has come to a fulfillment of what was there once in those little chubby cheeks. And looking upon the Lord's face in his baptism at the River Jordan, what we see above all is his certainty that he is indeed God's beloved son, a certainty that in him becomes our own certainty as God's beloved children by adoption in baptism. You see, Jesus' relationship with God the Father, this thing that we're seeing in the light of his face, was something that lay at the heart of his mission, a relationship which we call love, the deepest sharing of life, the most profound possible communion. And if we don't perceive that relationship between God the Father in heaven and God the Son here on earth, we'll never understand the words and the signs that Jesus is going to use in his ministry as we follow it in these later weeks. If we don't again hear the voice and see the Spirit as we join the Lord in the Jordan today, we'll miss the point of Christ's mission of bringing peace and happiness to every one of us. We'll miss the way he fulfills the desires of our hearts, the fulfillment we call salvation. I know that's a big word, and I also know that a lot of folks in our parts have a habit of throwing it around a bit roughly, but it truly is the mission of the long-awaited Messiah, the Emmanuel, God with us. His sonship, his purpose of salvation are so central, in fact, to his identity that his name means salvation. Yeshua in Hebrew, God is salvation. Then that newborn baby in Bethlehem grew up to be the one who baptizes, not just with water, but with the Holy Spirit and with fire, who brings change to the world by giving himself for the life of the world, a mystery that John the Baptist saw there that day in the River Jordan in the face of the one who came to be baptized. Everyone who watched knew that the day, that, that was the day when the Lord had begun his saving work, not with flagrant gestures that immediately drew a bunch of media attention, but with a calm and prayerful gaze, eyes lifted up to his heavenly Father within the complexity and the humility of daily life. So brothers and sisters, with this feast of the baptism of the Lord, the final feast of the Christmas season, we're opening the curtain now on a different scene than the one we've been waiting for and then watching over the last months. Today we leave the gentleness of the manger behind to encounter Jesus as a man. This gospel isn't asking us so much to linger with Mary and Joseph because they aren't in this particular scene, and we're also not still in the thick of that situation with the shepherds or the wise men. But that which was once announced by angels and worshiped by rich and poor alike, embraced by Saint Joseph and the Blessed Mother, now appears even more clearly. This man, Jesus, whose name speaks of his mission, now walks forward directly into the expectations of his people, our expectations for hope, for salvation. He prays, and in prayer, the Spirit and the voice call him to live the relationship he's had with the Father from all eternity, but now in the confines of the world, a relationship that will be shown on the cross. That life will be spent in his own words and gestures of love for each one of us, especially the poor and marginalized, a love which embraces those who feel far off from God, like Isaiah prophesied. But everything began for him and for us with his special relationship, his prayer with God the Father, a relationship he invites us into as well. In this thought, we'll find the source of every choice and decision the Savior of the world once born in Bethlehem and once baptized in the Jordan, will undertake as we follow him on his journeys in these coming months. And so with this feast of the Lord's baptism, we might be saying farewell to the Christmas season, but we sure can't put behind what we learned within it. We've experienced the hope of renewal within us, the unexpected reassurance of the possibility of true joy in the midst of a difficult and complicated world. 
And that's something our hearts can't let us ever forget. Looking upon the face of our Lord Jesus in prayer, we find there a truth that affects us deeply as well. The voice of the Father said, this is my beloved Son, listen to him. And those challenges are for us as well. In these coming months, as we journey forward towards Lent and Easter, we'll keep our eyes fixed on the face of the Son of God, listening to what he'll teach us and watching how he responds to the complexities and difficulties of life. And at the same time, in our own prayer, both together and individually, we know that the Father is speaking to us as well. We who in Christ Jesus are his adopted and much beloved children. Let's make sure that everyone else can see that prayerful truth written on our faces. My brothers and sisters, as we recall the baptism of the Lord in the River Jordan, we recall as well the occasion of our own baptisms, when we were buried with Christ so that we could walk with him in newness of life. Let us then renounce Satan and his works and renew the promises of our holy baptism from the day when we promised to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask us now and invite everyone to with us renew our baptismal promises. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? I do. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. in the spirit of adoption that we have received in Christ Jesus through his baptism in the waters of, jo of the Jordan and our own baptism, let us pray to God our Father for our needs and the needs of the entire human family. Our prayer response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Stephen Reka, bishops and priests, that their ministries of teaching, healing, and charity may bring sight to those who are blind to the life of God and liberation to those imprisoned by darkness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations and peoples of the world, that all may work together for the victory of justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the synod process of our diocese, that all the faithful will hear the call of the Holy Spirit as the diocesan synod meetings move forward. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the entire St. Thomas Parish community, that we may be a light to the world through our work and worship together. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our Parish Book of Intentions, the sick, the homebound, the incarcerated, all members of St. Thomas, and the men and women of the armed forces and their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of Joe Graffo, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our beloved dead, that they may share in the glory of Jesus' resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our Heavenly Father, 
You have raised us to new life through water and the Spirit. May your mighty Spirit rest upon us as we renew our dedication to the work of your kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in our presentation hymn number 295, Comfort, Comfort, O My People. Comfort, comfort, O my people, speak of peace now says our God. Comfort those who sit in darkness, mourning neath their sorrows, Lord. Speak unto Jerusalem of the peace that waits for them. Tell of all the sins I cover and the warfare now is over. Hark the voice of one who's crying in the desert near and near, bidding all to full repentance, since the kingdom now is here. Oh, that warning cry obey, now prepare for crowd away. Let the valleys rise to me. down to greet him. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of the same, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the Spirit's descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty. Without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Baptist, St. Thomas, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Stephen, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. 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 At our Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join in our closing song, number 333, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. So 